Hi, I'm Luca and you're watching The Making of Bag. This is the first video that's gonna go into the production, so the actual shooting of the film. So if you haven't yet seen the film, go watch it now, because I'm about to spoil everything. Action! For day one I had scheduled to shoot everything that takes place in Mary's house. So all the scenes besides those which involved her mom, which I left out for another day when Anna was gonna be on set as well. This meant we had to get both the beginning and the ending of the film, which happened in the reality of the story, and also the other scenes which happened in Mary's mind. So we kicked things off with the very first scene. Everything was already dressed, so this just meant that me and John had to go through the scene and I explained him where all the lights were gonna go. John is my trusty DOP on this film and this is the first production where I didn't operate the camera. This was a very important thing for me. I wanted to focus more on the directing, so I had my own monitor, which was extremely cool, I'm not gonna lie. And it also actually, besides being awesome, helped me focus more on what was happening in the scene rather than on shooting the actual scene. So while we were setting everything up, Miki was in the makeup chair and the amazing Maria Georgescu did the makeup for her. She's terrific, she did a fantastic job. After all that was said and done, Miki came to set and I started walking through the scene with her. Now we had rehearsed this scene in this exact location before, but with all the lights on and with the camera involved as well, I had to sort of walk her through, considering that she hadn't acted in a film before. So we had to figure some things out, such as how quickly she would get up from the chair so that we could pan up with her and how quickly she would have to pace around the room, how she would move and all that stuff had to be really nailed down, where she would still be in shot, where she wouldn't be, how she was gonna come back and sit down and everything. So after all of, this, all of these things were set up, we went to shoot the first shot, which was actually the very first shot in the film chronologically, and that is the close-up of the hands putting the cards. One, one, last one. Finished it? Okay. Tatar Magata? Action. Cut. Cut. Of course, these simple things take up the most time when shooting, so we needed really a bunch of takes to get this to work. Then we went to shoot the wide shot, and Akim, my amazing assistant director, rigged the cards with some string, got underneath the table, we timed everything, we did the cue, and the cards, of course, didn't fall from the get-go, we had to do multiple takes, but in the end we had a take which Mickey nailed, everyone laughed, it was terrific, so we went on to the next scene. And the next scene was the last scene, so Mickey had to do a whole acting turnover, turnaround, whatever you want to call it, to put herself through the whole mental situation, having gone through the entire film, having imagined all of that, to be in the final state where she is sort of at peace with the situation. So while Mickey did her acting thing to prepare for that scene, John started setting up the overhead rig. And this is where I got a really good idea spontaneously on set. I thought that I could just throw the cards around the room, turn it all upside down, peel some of the posters off of the walls, threw the pillows randomly around the place, turn the chair upside down to make it seem that Mary actually had a very big nervous breakdown while imagining all the th crazy things that she does. So we got our top down shot, we got the wide shot and then we moved on to the close up. And I thought it would be a good idea to shoot this handheld to sort of create the feeling that Mary is, has been distressed. What was funny was that George, the amazing focus puller and assistant cameraman on this shoot, kept making John laugh, so he would shake the camera too much, Mickey would laugh, who needed to perform a pretty serious moment right there, and of course it took some time to get all this together, but in the end it worked out perfectly. John, don't oh. un pic my... Ok, dacă vă țineți 3-4 duble, nu mai se poate, tocmai de asta, hai să-i dăm acum, okay. hai, 
Doamne aș... Încă am fi la păcănele. Then we took a little break and moved straight to turning around the room. So if the first two scenes which happen in reality are sort of cold, they're sort of on a cloudy day, the scenes happening in Mary's head had to be very warm, very sunny in this idealized world. So we had to simulate that because it was a cloudy day outside. So John set up a light right outside a window to create a nice beam to simulate sunlight and then also some other lights around the room. We switched the white balancing camera to make it feel a little warmer and of course we shot in the other direction. This was also a way to sort of separate the real room from the imagined room, but again by only showing one side of the room we sort of better sell the idea of this dream world. Mickey changed her wardrobe, came to do the scene, did it terrifically, it was the moment where she comes and greets the parrot. It was a very real moment, a very raw moment, very truthful in comparison to the rest of the film, but it sort of established more of a connection between the audience and Mary, even though it's at a pretty late point in the film, and more than that, sort of gives her a psycho air considering how tender she is with this parrot after what she's just done. Then we had to shoot a few more gags, but because we were pretty late in the day, we had to leave those for the other day when we were gonna be back here. The next thing we shot was of course the fake shower scene, and for this we needed to dress Mary once again, make all her clothes bloody, figure out how she would look, not having shot the whole school sequences yet where she actually gets all the blood on her. So we had to sort of think that off in advance and make it seem realistic. And we really toned down the amount of water she still had on her and how wet the clothes still were. So while Maria was painting Mickey with blood, I actually went ahead and shot a pretty long take, six minutes of footage of the parrot in the cage, which I knew I was going to use multiple times in the film as reactions. I'm pretty good at directing pets, apparently. I can speak their language. I mean, it looks weird from the outside, but I mean, look what a great performance he gave. Asta e domnul regizor, care face semne la papagal să vină. Shaolin master. While I did that, John also set up the lighting in the bathroom and he actually had a great idea. Instead of shooting the wide shot dead on, very Wes Anderson-like symmetrical, he said why not pan the camera around a bit, catch some of the mirror and actually see her entering the room from the mirror, which was a really great idea, made the shot cooler and it has some pretty interesting story and symbolic implications as well. Then we grabbed a few more inserts, which I ended up cutting And of course, we finished the day with a glorious insert of Mary opening the shower tap. And of course, we shot this with Mickey being in the shower. And again, it was a pretty nice end of the day. And we finally were able to say, it's a wrap. Thank you. Bravo, cut, and So that was pretty much day one, it was a very good start. We were going to be back at this location to shoot with Anna as well, but until then we had to shoot some of the things at school. So we were going to shoot for two days, but you'll see in the next videos how much that stretched out and how hectic, crazy and absolutely exhausting for me those days were. So stay tuned for those videos and until then, well, I guess I'll see you when I see you. Bye.